My name is Jean Ponzi. I'm the Green Resources Manager for the Earthway Center at the Missouri Botanical Garden. Very pleased to be a member of the Biodiversity St. Louis team and to welcome you here tonight on behalf of that team. Uh, let's see, a couple of things I would like to tell you before I introduce our speakers and I have a, just a very brief little introductory presentation to share with you too. The MBG Press has a table in the lobby, which I know many of you have visited. There are a number of publications that are produced by the Missouri Botanical Garden Press out there, including The Flora of Missouri, three volumes, any one of which you could balance on your head to improve your posture or that of your teenage daughter at any given time, or put on the chairs in the dining room at Thanksgiving and the toddlers would feel much taller. George, Dr. George Yatskevich, one of our presenters tonight, is the, uh, the lead author, the author of Flora of Missouri, Volumes 1, 2, and 3, the most recent editions. And if you would like to have him sign your copy tonight, I have it on good authority that, you, that George will sign them. I highly recommend that. There are, in addition to the MBG Press items, right on the pillar there, outside in the uh, entrance to this room, there are two easels that have two different invitations to contribute your thoughts. One is ideas, random thoughts about Biodiversity St. Louis, this initiative. I noticed that the first thing somebody wrote up there was, what are examples of bad biodiversity projects? There is a positive in, uh, introduction. Um, and one of the easels invites people to, invites you to please um, identify projects that you know of that are taking place or that are going to be taking place that might be projects that could be highlighted uh, through the efforts of Biodiversity St. Louis. I would like to ask you please, how did you find out about tonight's event? How many people found out about this talk through Missouri Botanical Garden Communications? Whoa, not as many as I thought. How many found out from a friend? How many are getting emails from Biodiversity St. Louis so far? How many of you came for the free wine and cheese? <laughs> <laughs> and for how many of you is this date night? <laughs> okay, well that was interesting. Oh yeah, what about the Academy of Science? How many of you found out for the Academy of Science? Okay, thank you. Um, I would like to invite you to save the date for one of the events in this speaker series that we have confirmed so far, March 21st and 22nd. On those two days at the Missouri Botanical Garden, we will host Doug Tallamy, who is an entomologist, a bug guy from the University of Delaware, and his book, Bringing Nature Home, is really has really become the guide for the general public to encourage an understanding of biodiversity in our backyard and encourage biodiversifying our personal habitats to welcome other members of the circle of life, besides just Zoiza, to our homes. Um, and, uh, let's see, also, the two items that you hopefully got when you came in tonight, the agenda for tonight's event that has a save the date about Doug Tallamy and the Partners for Native Landscaping Workshop for Homeowners, which will feature not only a talk and a reception with uh, Dr. Tallamy, but a workshop and plant sale all day on Saturday, March 22nd, that will have presenters representing a, a variety of native plant aficionados and champion organizations and uh, a keynote talk by Dr. Tallamy. That's going to be a really great gig. And if you're a garden member or you're on the Biodiversity St. Louis e-news list, you will be notified, notified when registration for that begins. Uh, let's see. You also received a copy of an article called Biodiversity St. Louis. This is a reprint of an article that will be featured in the Missouri Botanical Garden Winter Bulletin, coming out soon, mailed or emailed to garden members. Um, we are very, very pleased to have been able to spotlight a number of achievements so far in this initiative in that bulletin. And top 10 messages about urban biodiversity. A challenging subject to speak about, believe me. I uh, want to thank our speakers tonight, Dr. George Yatskevich from the Missouri Botanical Garden Science and Conservation staff. 
author of Flora of Missouri, uh, Steiermark's Flora of Missouri, Dr. Kira Krekos from Maryville University, professor of biology, and Dr. Adrian Cerezo, social ecologist, and, and what is it, Burr in the Saddle? What's your official title there at the zoo? Strategic Irritant at the St. Louis Zoo, our sister institution. Okay, so urban biodiversity and this initiative, Biodiversity St. Louis. When Dr. Peter Wise Jackson, the president of Missouri Botanical Garden, came to a team of folks here at MBG, members of the staff members of the Earthway Center, our sustainability division, uh, Dr. Sheila Voss, who is our vice president of education, representatives of our institutional advancement division, um, almost two years ago and said, we need to have an initiative about biodiversity. He's from Ireland. Make it so. That was an exciting challenge for us, especially for those of us in the Earthway Center that are already used to conversing with our fellow humans about green topics that may not be on the top of their list. But it was also a very, very challenging um, challenge to take up because biodiversity represents all life on Earth. It's all the genetic diversity. It's all the living things. It's all the communities. It is the non-living elements of life on Earth, like soil. I would challenge the fact that anyone would call that non-living because in my personal explorations, I was quick to find out that approximately 97% of all the biodiversity on Earth is soil-based organisms. Move over beetles. When you talk about that, it is all life on Earth. Talking about that, communicating about that, getting people to care about that in an urban and suburban context has been a challenge that we have really welcomed and is, frankly, rolling out in a very impressive way. Now, why Missouri Botanical Garden here? Well, first of all, plants, the producers, the only living things that can make food from sunlight. They're quiet. They don't really you know, bug you very much, but they're very important. And so those of us who work here at the garden feel honor bound to speak up on behalf of the plant world. And not that MBG is the be all and end all of understanding of biodiversity. We have an incredible wealth of organizations in the St. Louis metro area that are already dealing with, promoting, engaged with, advancing the cause of biodiversity. So this community initiative to promote, protect, and plan for biodiversity throughout the greater St. Louis region, jump-started by the Missouri Botanical Garden with our hope that these coordinated efforts to better cross-promote, better network, better engage the average St. Louisan in some of these efforts will bring biodiversity to the fore in the minds of our fellow urban and suburban humans. Our vision is to have a community that understands biodiversity. I mean, we have a pretty good understanding of human diversity in our society now. And that was no small feat up until fairly recently. Um, we, to get people to understand what that concept means and to factor in biodiversity decision-making factors in business, in school planning, in urban planning, in backyard, homeowner, day-to-day -day planning and decision-making. That is our vision for a biodiverse St. Louis. And frankly, the folks that have been working on this so far within the garden and in our network of signatories to the initiative Biodiversity St. Louis, we have enormous confidence that this can happen because of the resources and the smarts and the engagement that we have in our St. Louis region. That doesn't mean that we won't be working at it, however, because when you talk about urban and suburban biodiversity, and uh, ur I say urban, that really kind of means like a St. Louis metro area, you know, St. Louis City County, St. Charles County, Franklin County, the counties in the metro east, because half of the human population lives in urban areas today of the, what is it, 7.6 billion of us on the planet now? Several years ago, I discovered that the world population had doubled in my lifetime. That's why it's so hard to find a parking place now. Even in St. Louis, I joke, but you have to or you'll just collapse. And urbanization being a leading factor in eroding 
biodiversity, eroding the habitat and eroding the space that makes possible the thriving of biodiverse communities of plants and animals of all kinds, people who live in these concentrated areas, we have a really amazing opportunity to help foster an understanding and foster preservation of the diversity in the communities that we share this space with. When you think about biodiversity, um, what do you think about? Do you think about untouched spaces, rolling prairies with one, you know, one woman walking through the prairie in a billowing white dress? Ha ha, try to find that with the concentration of humans that we have. Um, or do you think about the way in which our human habitation continually erodes and paves over and um, leaves desecrated areas that we are, we are dominating. Why should humans care about biodiversity in an urban area? Well, the term ecosystem services, I use this a lot in my work. And at the beginning of my 25 years as a communicator about green stuff, ecosystem services wouldn't have meant much to me. But now I can go into businesses around St. Louis and talk about this and say that term and modify it with the fact that it's the water that comes out of the faucet. It's the electricity that comes out of the wall. It's the food that everybody thinks comes from the grocery store. And people kind of get those. We're starting to get those connections. But the way in which, especially people in urban and suburban areas, depend on Earth's capability and the biodiverse communities of Earth's capability to continue to deliver those ecosystem services is a much more critical relationship for those of us who live in urban and suburban areas to care about than somebody who, say, lives out in the middle of Iowa and maybe has an extra acre on which they could grow a garden. So it is to our best advantage to understand this stuff and to integrate a response to biodiversity issues along with our response to energy and water conservation and recycling and even, yes, climate change. There are a number of motivations to care about urban biodiversity. If you care about nature, which I know many of us do intrinsically care about that, there are those motivations, but there are, believe me, plenty of people who won't care about any of this stuff unless you can attach a dollar figure to it. And there are some parts of this continuum, uh, 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 okay, especially providing ecosystem services, the foundation of all local economies. Information just about trees as deliverers of ecosystem services. There is a wealth of information that quantifies those values as well as qualifies those values. And we need to have that kind of information to make our case for everybody who needs to hear this message. What does biodiversity St. Louis look like? It looks different to many people. It may be un seemingly untouched spaces. I remember when I was a young woman in the 1980s, first establishing a relationship with the Missouri Botanical Garden. This was my personal sanctuary, and I could waltz in here at 5 to 5 every afternoon, and all the security guards knew me, and I could, like, dance with the trees and commune with nature, because at that time, nobody would say, hey, baby, can I go with you? Because you had to pay $3 to get in. This was very managed biodiversity, but a place in which a human being really could connect with nature. Not untouched, but important to make that connection. Biodiversity St. Louis also looks like the human relationships with all the places that we live. The public green spaces, the developed spaces, our backyards, our institutional spaces. Some people are caretakers and aware. Some people are just users. All of those relationships just users of those ecosystem services. Those are all important relationships. Biodiversity St. Louis may be the wide open spaces of Shaw Nature Reserve. It can also be the beautiful plantings and the sculptural interactions down at City Garden. They can be little areas of plantings in the medians of parking lots that are increasingly used as bioswales, rainwater catchment systems. They can be, you know, little walkways where you have a habitual pathway or maybe you only come there one time and the fact that nature catches your attention in that relationship touches your heart, touches your mind. That's a part of what biodiversity is like. It can have to do with rainscaping rebates. It can have to do with 
energy efficiency and use of solar power and engagement with native plant programming, all of that is part of what biodiversity is like. In cities all around the world, biodiversity is becoming a driver. Green infrastructure solutions to stormwater management issues, to energy delivery issues, to food security issues, all of those kinds of things are part of the complex that Biodiversity St. Louis represents and seeks to engage us with. There are a number of things that have been achieved so far in this year of effort um, for the program, Biodiversity St. Louis. And you can see that if you read that little article that we shared with you. One of the big things is there are five working group areas that we identified when the Garden hosted a stakeholder summit back in May here at the Garden. Five areas that we are convening working groups to address. Economic and policy incentives and opportunities has had one meeting so far. We will have another one in December. We have meeting dates for all five of these working groups on our docket here in late November, early December. And if you are interested in getting involved with one of these five working groups and you have not yet done so uh, as an individual or as a representative in a, of an organization, we invite you to please make yourself known and get, get on the team. This is, I'm very proud to announce, a list of what has happened so far as part of this initiative. We hosted a community stakeholder summit here in May, which was the choir. We invited the choir, and about 65 different organizations came to that summit, organizations of all kinds, nonprofit, faith-based, educationally-based, corporate, municipal, groups that were already engaged with biodiversity in some way. And we wanted to call those groups together to say the purpose of this initiative is let's all work together to get this message across in a more concerted, more diverse, more engaging voice so that all of the boats can rise in dealing with this subject matter. We have had a, an, a part of the um, St. Louis Green Business Challenge, which is a program that I work with directly. It's a, a program of the St. Louis Regional Chamber, and 150 of our region's businesses have engaged with this program so far, greening their day-to-day -day business practices since that program started in 2010. And in 2013, we added an element to the scorecard that the business uses, businesses used called Better Business Through Biodiversity, BBB. Shameless co-optation of another well-respected BBB kind of title. And out of the 21 companies that came to a training to engage to learn about what does biodiversity mean to my business back in March, we are getting case studies, we are getting mapping, we are getting action planning from a really diverse array of companies. And you'll start to see those on the website that we have established, the web pages that we have established, biodiversitystl.org, biodiversitystl.org. Uh, this is the first event in our speaker series. We, you can email us at biodiversity STL at mobot.org. Uh, we have a biodiversity engagement pledge that you can take. I think we have copies of that pledge outside. Um, we've had communications with uh, Chicago Wilderness, with the Heartland Conservancy, with a number of other organizations, and we really have a wealth of signatories so far, organizations that have said, yeah, we're working with biodiversity, we want to help all these boats rise, join in this initiative. It's a lot to take on, but a lot has been accomplished because so many resources were already here and working in our community. From organizations like Forest Relief of Missouri, the Missouri Department of Conservation, the Academy of Science St. Louis and their bio blitzes, um, programs in K-12 schools, programs in universities, programs in businesses, so many more organizations. St. Louis Audubon, um, it's, we have incredible resources here to make people aware and engage people with biodiversity subject matter. So please join in that effort and uh, email us if you'd like to be a part of our our contact group, check out that website, take the pledge. And now it is my great pleasure to introduce the first of our speakers.